Since today is September 16th ozone day, I'm gonna present some information. See this picture here. This is the four layers of atmosphere. The troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. As you can guess, we aren't gonna discuss about all of it. We are just gonna discuss, about the ozone layer in the stratosphere. So, what is ozone layer? The ozone layer, is a fragile shield of gas, that protects the Earth, from the harmful portion of the rays of the Sun, thus helping preserve life on the planet. It is mainly found in the lower portion of the stratosphere, from approximately 15 to 35 kilometers above Earth, although its thickness varies seasonally and geographically. It absorbs 97 to 99 percent of the Sun's medium frequency, ultraviolet light, which otherwise would potentially damage exposed life forms near the surface. Discovery The ozone layer was discovered in 1913, by the French physicists Charles Fabry and Henri Buisson. But, its properties were explored in detail by the British meteorologist, G. M. B. Dobson, who developed a simple spectrophotometer, or the Dobson meter that could be used to measure, stratospheric ozone from the ground. Between 1928 and 1958, Dobson established a worldwide network of ozone monitoring stations, which continue to operate to this day. The Dobson unit, a convenient measure of the amount of ozone overhead, is named in his honor. Ozone Layer Formation The photochemical mechanisms, that give rise to the ozone layer were discovered by the British physicist, Sidney Chapman in 1930. Ozone in the Earth's stratosphere, is created by ultraviolet light striking ordinary oxygen molecules, containing two oxygen atoms, splitting them into individual oxygen atoms. The atomic oxygen then combines, with unbroken O2 to create ozone, O3. Although, it is long lived in the stratosphere, the ozone molecule is unstable, and when ultraviolet light hits ozone it splits into a molecule of O2, and an individual atom of oxygen. This is a continuing process called, the ozone-oxygen cycle. Depletion When scientists working in the late 1970s, discovered that humanity was creating a hole in this protective shield, they raised the alarm. But the global response was decisive. The depletion, in the atmospheric ozone layer is called as ozone hole. The hole caused by ozone-depleting substances, ODSs, used in aerosols and cooling, such as refrigerators and air conditioners was threatening to increase cases of skin cancer and cataracts, and damage plants, crops, and ecosystems. These gases includes families of chemicals known as halons, chlorofluorocarbons, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, nitric oxides etc. The chlorofluorocarbons known as the CFCs are very stable in the troposphere with lifetimes of approximately 50 to 100 years. This long lifetime allows CFCs that are emitted near the surface to be carried by the wind upward. These gases rising to the upper atmosphere react with ultraviolet rays from the sun and dissociate to form chlorine and bromine. It is estimated that each chlorine atom is capable to decay about one lock of ozone molecules, and that bromine is 40 times more reactive than chlorine. In 1985, the world's governments adopted the Vienna Convention for the Protection of the Ozone Layer. Under the Convention's Montreal Protocol, governments, scientists, and industry worked together, to cut out 99% of all ozone-depleting substances. Montreal Protocol The principal aim of the Montreal Protocol, is to protect the ozone layer, by taking measures to control total global production and consumption of substances that deplete it, with the ultimate objective of their elimination on the basis of developments in scientific knowledge and technological information. Implementation of the Montreal Protocol progressed well in developed and developing countries. Its attention focused initially on chemicals with higher ozone depletion potentials including CFCs and halons. Today, all of the world's 197 countries have signed the treaty. On August 2, 2003, scientists announced that the global depletion of the ozone layer may be slowing down because of the international regulation of ozone depleting substances. 
In a study organized by the American Geophysical Union, three satellites and three ground stations confirmed that the upper atmosphere ozone depletion rate slowed significantly during the previous decade. Now the ozone layer is healing and expected to return to pre-1980 values by the middle of the 21st century. The Montreal Protocol is considered the most successful, international environmental agreement to date. World Ozone Day held on September 16, celebrates this achievement. It shows that collective decisions and action, guided by science, are the only way to solve major global crises. In this year of the COVID-19 pandemic that has brought such social and economic hardship, the Ozone Treaty's message of working together in harmony and for the collective good is more important than ever. This year we celebrate 35 years of the Vienna Convention and 35 years of global ozone layer protection.